got some tucker in it. <laughs> oh, anything like that? Just oh yeah, that's right up under that. Get your thumbs that dirty. Last point in there, yeah. Oh, moment of truth. If that made any difference. Oh yeah. There we go. We've got a knuckle now. Yeah. Flex. Stop and extend. There it is. For me, I like the challenge of actually yep. stabilizing through my hip and glute, so that's another progression or regression. This would be a regression. Yeah. G'day guys, Darcy and Jace here. Today we're focusing on Jason's knee, which he has a little bit of a hiccup, uh, feeling some pain in the patella tendon specifically, as he's been running and playing footy. Yeah. This is a two-part video, so we're gonna head down into the gym, we're gonna do some exercise, some rehab, some strengthening stuff to really focus on um, that as well. First of all, let's go through some anatomy, and you can actually get a better understanding of what muscles attach into this patella tendon and where they originate. So what we're looking at here to begin with, we're actually going to look, uh, yeah, sorry, mate, is our patella tendon here. You can see the patella ligament and the patella retin retinaculum. That's what we're going to be focusing on, all this white matter, yeah? And we can also get a better understanding of where these muscles attach onto. So our ASIS, which is right up higher here on Jace, um, is where our rec fem, that's our main quad, we'll be focusing on here, the vast lat our vastus medialis and our vastus intermedialis, okay? Our four muscles of the quad that make up, um, yeah, this front part of the leg. Okay, so what I like to do first though is actually do some ass assessment and test all my patients to make sure I get a better understanding of what's going on. We like to look at the right side compared to the left. Jason's got an injury in the left side. So what I like to do with any knee pain is just feeling how his heel to bum test is, which Look, that isn't great, but I know on Jace that it's not gonna be that great on the other leg either. So if it's not good on one leg, it's not good on the other, then it's not too much of a concern. But I'd be asking, is there any pain? Is there any discomfort? No pain on this side. No pain? No what pain about this side? Was there any pain nah. on this side? No. Nah. Feels okay. Look, that's a, quite a big knuckle depth. We actually might see if we can improve that. Another one that I like to do is just check the hip. Hello, Patreonos! Patreonos! <laughs> Check out our latest Patreon releases. Oh, oh what is he? Come on, show your legs! He's my turn! To join, click the link in the description. As well. So to me, that feels really guarded, just muscular. Mm. It's not like a bone. Not a hard end range. Not a hard yeah. end range. The end range feels like soft, yeah. soft and bouncy, which is good. His external rotation is really good. Internal rotation is fine. Abduction maybe would have a little bit of something mm. going on in the groins potentially. Um, but for me, let's have a look at both sides. Yeah, this side's a little bit better. Like the, mm. the, the end range is, is better. Internal rotation is really good. This this yeah. was a problem yeah. a couple of months ago. We yeah. did a video on it, and it's Jason's kept it up. He's still got a bit of external rotation uh, blocking there in the hip, and his abduction similar to the other side. So what I'd actually want to do first is I might try and get his hip flexion better. So let's check your active straight leg raise one more time too, Jace. Cool. So that's just off ninety. That's like eighty six. Very precise, I Very like precise. it. And I'd say that's 90, if not a little bit more. Felt, okay. It felt smoother to me on that side. Felt smoother. Yeah. So what we can look at is, is there a restriction going on in his hamstring or is it a firing pattern issue of his hip flexors that aren't engaging, creating that hip flexion in his hip. So I'm gonna start there, because it's knee specific. We know that when we looked at the quad, we knew that the rec fem attaches onto the ASIS, okay? What we also have around, which is, yeah, that bony landmark yeah, there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start high. So I'm gonna have to pull this tail yeah, we'll right get, up. Get, yeah, it gets out of the get way for you. Out. Sorry, mate, don't wanna squash those little bastards. <laughs> no, we'll keep them well clear. Keep them clear. We've got a big palm coming through, you might. Fucking... <laughs> Don't want to clip one? No, nah. okay, so what I like to do, use my pizzy form, is connect onto that bone. So I'm actually pushing back into that, so I know that I'm getting the most purchase of all of that tissue as we can. So I'm hitting that tendon and I'm sinking down and working out. So working down towards that knee. Really good. So what I'm feeling for here is any like um, adhesions or build up points pushing back on me already there, I can feel there's some tension going on a little bit further down that tendon. Yeah. Feels a bit more as you're getting in towards that mid, yeah. mid section there. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna come off that. Yeah, okay, cool. Nice. 
and here again. So just hydrating this tissue, working the tendons because we know that they have the least amount of blood supply. That is where, I guess, compared to the muscle belly, it struggles to get that blood supply. And with healing, we're always looking for blood supply and getting the most blood circulating through that area for the most beneficial um, recovery that the, that the body can endure. So really good. Yeah. Fast track that healing phase. And then again, I'm gonna use the other palm. How's that feel, man? It's good, yeah. It's not too bad up in that high part of the tendon. It's just when you start to get more where it sort of mm. probably goes muscular mm. tendinous junction. So mm. where it starts to form more of the muscle fibers. Mm. Yeah, that sort of area where you are now. Yeah, that's starting to feel it. So let's go straight through that there. And what I feel right here is that junction point, as Jace said, you can feel the, the separation of his rec fem compared to his um, lastus, um, vastus lat. lateralis. So his vast lat, his lateral quad, you can feel that separation. And we're lucky that Jace is quite um, conditioned and fit. So you can actually feel, um, yeah, the different I muscle show types. This one where you can see the difference, like. Yeah, you can see that one there. You can see VMO through the middle, the teardrop. And then, yeah, you can see that fastest lat and rec fem. Oh, that's got some tucker in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're also going to be like hitting a little bit of sartorius through there that sort of attaches more on the lateral aspect of the hip. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's there's, good. There's some good stuff. There. Yeah, there's some deep, dull quad pain in there that's. Mm. <laughs> Just feels good to be treated, but yeah, yeah. The reason got to endure I, it. The reason I like to treat the hip and assess the hip is the knee is generally a byproduct of what's going on at the hip or the ankle. Now, off camera, Jason and I had a little quick assessment of his ankle. His ankle was moving fine, if not better, on this leg. So there might be something deeper to it. There might be something deeper hindering his um, right ankle that we would look at. But for today, let's not get too um, complex with it, and let's just stick to our simple philosophies treat the tendons, hydrate them, get some range back and see how he um, operates and moves. And then obviously the, the clean first, build second strategy where we're gonna get into, down into the gym and strengthen those tendons. Really good. Okay, so what I'd like to do is show you how we can use an elbow to be more specific and work thoroughly through that tendon there. So making sure that I'm not doing too much pressure straight away. I'm really sinking in and melting. Because it can be yeah. quite ropey on a lot of people, can't yeah. that rec fem tendon and that quad tendon, yeah. especially if they do have really tight quads. So exactly. it's important not to, to start a bit flatter with your elbow and forearm and mm. then you can sort of build your pressure and do it. Yeah, yeah. make sure you're broad because it is a little bit of a balancing act. You need, you need to use a bit of your um, experience here to know where to go and just not really being too sharp with your elbow because you will flick off and it's just uncomfortable for your client to receive that. There's a bit more there with the elbow now. Yeah. So a bit more medial. Yeah, there. That's okay. it. Oh, good. Good. So it might be a little bit of pectineus that's going on there, another little hip flexor, adductor. There's so many different little muscle groups yeah. in there. Like your adductor is obviously a bit more medial, but there are some of them that sort of fan that bit mm. more up there. So, yeah, you can get a lot of... Uh, compensation and tightness up around that hip crease. Yeah. Yep. Our pain, when we have pain, our body will always try to protect and guard that area and we will move, um, I guess, in compensationary ways where we're going to try and like limp or we will put favor more... Favour more one side. Favour yeah. one, yeah, exactly. Favour one more side or favour the right side over the left. Well, the body just starts to use different muscles in all mm. muscles in a different way almost so yeah, you start to use more around your hip and might be more dominant through that area and you're not yep. actually properly moving through the knee yep. so that's what can actually create issues at the knee so yeah that's why you also don't just focus on where the pain is you've got to assess and yep. see what the cause of the pain is so treat the cause not just the symptom yep. which is one of our key sayings here yeah Look, we are gonna definitely go come down to that as well. Let's have a little bit of a feel of how that 
yeah, that's yeah that feels better. cleaner already. Yeah, that's just the like end now, range. Now it does more feels probably like gluten hamstring, but gluten it feels like it's got Great. more. I thought I was going to have to go into psoas and, and iliacus. I'm going to save Jace's grace there because it is uncomfortable. <laughs> that's, that's responded yeah. really well in just yeah. a few minutes. Wow. Happy with that. Okay, the next one is working specific to that bone. Oh, shut the book. But yeah. coming over here, Leo, you can see how much white matter. You can see all the fascia that is covering that patella and holding that in place. Without that and without our muscles, we've just got our femur and our tibia that are attached to one another. So the white matter is our fascia. It's our, um, it's our hydration system, but it's also like keeping our body parts together. Bit of a shock absorption system shock as absorption well. The fascia well. really absorbs a lot of trauma. And yep. yeah, it's also like the spring system within the body. Like mm -hmm. it helps to create movement. And yeah, if you've got blocks in the fascial system, that's going to affect your muscles and your joints. So yep. that's why we are so big on targeting the fascia, not yep. just yeah treating through the muscle belly. Yep. And that's straight into it. That high... Just under the patella there where under. you finish, yeah. So it doesn't look like much, but I'm actually using that part there to really purchase onto that patella. So I'm in between that bony landmark here, that tibia, and then I'm just off that and push. You can see how much I'm picking up the slack and then pushing down into that, okay? Straight away, it's like a feeling of like relief, isn't it? As mm, soon as somebody yeah. does this, people, don't really um, treat a lot on the knee. You won't see a lot of therapists do this, no. but we love it because we know how good it feels straight away and how effective it can be just um, offloading that tendon that's be become a little bit angry for, for whatever reason. And as Darcy mentioned at the top when he was treating the quads tendon, like there's not as good a blood supply in there. So if you're not actually getting the treatment in there to increase blood flow into that area and promote that healing, mm. yeah, you can do all the strengthening work, but yeah, you're not actually getting that healing to clear out and to get more flow in there, yep. which then you can strengthen it more effic efficiently and effectively. Yeah, exactly. exactly. As we said, it's all about flow. It's all about movement of cells, oxygen and blood through those joints. Hydration of the tissue. Hydration tissues, of yeah. the tissue is key. If we're stagnant, we're not moving our knees, we're not going to have much blood flowing through there. Um, or if we, um, yeah, that doesn't have the blood, same blood supply as our muscle belly, like our quad or our hamstring or our calf, then this is what's going to, um, I guess, Im improve that. Yeah, promote that flow. Promote the flow, flow versus stagnation. And that's all that a lot of these, um, like blood plasma is a little bit different because you're actually flipping the blood and taking, um, taking out all the red blood cells. That's what you see with these PRP injections and things like that. But in terms of like um, just getting just getting um, some injections and things in there, like all they're doing is just trying to stimulate blood flow. Um, without actually getting their hands dirty. We're, we're, we're getting in here and doing the work. So With a less invasive way. Less invasive yeah. way. You don't need any any needles or injections or anything like that. Just Oh, yeah, that's right up under that. Get your thumbs that dirty. last point in there, yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's where I've mainly been feeling it. And it's all right when I'm running at a constant, but it's just taking off to sprint because I'm playing footy player, if those that don't know. So, yeah, taking off to sprint or jump off that leg. So I actually noticed that um, last night I was jumping off my other leg, which is probably my non-preferred when I jump. But, um, yeah, it was just that extra push through the knee that mm -hmm. was sort of producing the pain. But um, when I was actually constantly running and moving, it's all right. Yeah. And you did a video on this last week or the week before on your quad? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, Aaron treated my quad, which yeah. you, if you haven't looked, go and have a look at that. He treats both quads and yeah. shows a thorough demonstration of that as well. Yep, but di didn't do anything specific to the knee, right? Like, no, it was more just a quad focused yeah. treatment, yeah. So we've seen what um, relieving the quad can do, in, oh, sorry, loosening off the quad can do to help relieve the knee pain. But now we're going to show you how we can get into the specific specific yeah. points. Like I'm feeling really bony, hard points here. And a lot of, as I said, other practitioners that just aren't aware that you can, you can go into these depths. You can start to feel the bones and the joints in here and just work them, work the, the white matter. And this is what it really needs. Like, yeah, you can treat as much of the quad and work on that. But if you're not actually getting into that painful point, yep. that's where you can be missing so much gold. Yeah. Look, the easy, the easy stuff, and it is, it is, uh, will work sometimes. Is mm. offloading the muscle that attaches to the joint, 
Sure, so you've got, cut, you've got ankle pain, get into the calf. If you've got knee pain, get into the quad. You've got back of the knee pain, get into the hamstring. You've mm. got hip pain, get into the soles. All these things that attach into those joints, they, they, they do work, yeah. absolutely. But to be even more effective and even more specific, you actually might find little bone spurs or, or adhesions around these ligaments and into the tendons that you're missing out on. Yeah, you actually need to sort of break down that scarring and the scar That's tissue. already feeling so much less yeah. intense in terms of like pain wise when you're pushing in there yeah it's not as sharp when you're getting up there so i'm just moving sort of gouging in and out plowing that through using my thumb i'll show you how i can use an elbow just for the sake of the video so look at that you can i'm actually getting like almost my full body weight into it and Jason's doing all right, you know, he's not kicking and screaming. It just, as long as I don't push directly mm. down on that, because if you do have knee pain, you might have irritations in the fat pad. So if you push the patella onto the fat pad that's already aggravated, you're just gonna make things, stir things up, make things worse. So my direction is down, but then it's up. Yeah, so you're almost hooking under that patella. Hooking under the patella, that tendon. exactly. Yeah. Sort of moving it out of the way. The patella's, um, it's a fascinating um, bone. It's not really a joint or anything. It just yeah, floats. floats around. It's just held there by a couple of tendons. And yeah, the like skin you can move and the it fashion. around, and yeah, yeah. So we can we can actually um, be quite playful with it in terms of we can get it out of the way and move it, and work under oh. it. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and we obviously have. Um, meniscus and things like that, that are, are another shock absorber and keep our joints healthy, but sometimes they can get tiny little microscopic tears, like fraying, it's like a, it's like a used rope mm -hmm. sometimes, that used rope starts to fray, you can feel parts of those, parts of that, uh, parts of that meniscus when you're running and just getting in here and sort of breaking it down into smaller bite-sized pieces can actually alleviate um, some of the pain. Unless you've got a really bad tear in your meniscus, you don't need surgery. Yeah, you, you can have little tears in there and get away with um, performing and running and sprinting and, and um, lifting without the surgery. Just get in there and do a bit of day surgery. This is it now. Yeah, this is it. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he's not kicking and screaming yet, but he's close. Yeah. I'm arching up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Really good. But yeah, if you have knee pain and you haven't had this work done... Highly recommend it. Like, yeah, how many people would you have fixed with this yeah, particular it, treatment that yeah. yeah, have seen other people or might be, have been doing all the exercises, might mm. have had their quads done, but just going to this area, which is the source of the pain or where they're actually feeling it, it's such a relieving sensation, but yeah. It's just um, become second nature. We're mm. like knee pain, we go straight into that. And yeah, the amount of clients that have mm -hmm. gone, wow, what are, you, what are you doing? I've never had this before. It's even better when uh, clients haven't had any body work, seen any physio, seen yeah. any, and they don't even, they can't even compare it to what they've had before, and you just go, oh, that's all right, you're getting the best. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're a little bit confident in your approach and go, what, well, you've never had, well, it's a good start, you're getting the best. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, okay. That feels so I can, good there. Yeah, I can feel on the top. So again, I've started on the top of the patella, but that's just a starting point. There's really no pressure. It's once I roll down that... Sink off, yeah. Yeah, I sink off and... Yeah, the insertion of that um, rec fem is in here. We know our medialis... Yeah, our medialis comes in... Uh, sorry, our VMO comes into the uh, medial side and our vastus lat onto the outside of the knee. But our rec fem is what we're really getting the most purchase on here. Oh, yeah. So Jason's got a game tomorrow. We've got to get you, got to get you right. Fit man. and firing, yep. Oh. So I can still be quite deep without um, causing too much trauma to the tissue because the day before you don't want to go too deep. You'll feel heavy. If he was to, you know, play any sport or do any big run tomorrow, you you don't want to feel heavy in the legs. And sometimes leaving. <coughs> It's like DOMS, it's like mm. having DOMS in the gym. If you go deep, you're leaving some sort of this delayed onset of muscle soreness. Um, it's not really it's not really that, but it just feels similar. If yeah. anybody's wanting to know what it would feel like. 
you don't want doms on your performance day when you want to be at the peak. Oh, feels good. Feels good. Yeah. Yep, so just taking pressure off the knee. I like pushing up. I like going up from the knee and just making sure that I'm really giving a, a thorough clean. Yeah, it's almost like you're targeting different. So when you're working down from the hip down, it's almost like you, that's where you're going to have more effect releasing for the hip. But if you want to release the knee, yep. um, yeah, working up and promoting that flow in towards the middle of the belly where it can get flushed out. Yep. Yep. And I like to do just a little lateral one on this IT band, which is connective tissue, which is a little bit harder to um, change the length of, that's for sure. But still have a good effect on it. Still have a good effect on it, exactly. And we're, we're, again, we're working the fascia. That outer layer that keeps it all intact. Yeah, a bit sore. So we know that Jace kicking, it, this is your, your left, your left foot, foot. Yeah, so yeah. the difference in how many kicks he would be doing on this foot compared to that would be 90%. <laughs> 99, 100% I reckon. 100%. I don't use my right leg. It's like a lot of left footers and yep. uh, particularly AFL, it's known that left footers tend to not have an opposite foot. Yep. So it's just there for balance, <laughs> which is very true for me. So why we're going to, when we're, Finishing up here, we're going to head down to the gym and do some kicking specific tendon and knee uh, exercises. So we'll go through that in just a moment. Stay tuned. That's it. But make sure that we're just doing a nice thorough job offloading all this uh, tendons and, and fascia around this area. Oh yeah, there's a bit there. Let me go through that a little slower. It's the importance of not skipping over the cleaning process. We've said mm. that before, but mm. yeah, you want to make sure you've got that thorough clean done and then you can build properly on a clean foundation where if Dar skips over and he might mm. um, miss something that's really important to getting the most out of the exercises that you're going to do. So that's why we don't go straight into the exercise and just work on strengthening because you yep. need to clean that tissues and get the joints moving the way you want them to yep. in proper movement and activation. Yeah, totally. So, Really well said, Jace. So, his knee flexion actually might get better because, it, again, the quads are a knee extensor, but when we're flexing the knee, you can think of how the tightness in the quads... They need to lengthen. Yeah, would, um, would be restricting that movement. <clears throat> so we'll retest. It was more than a knuckle. It was almost a knuckle and a half from his heel to his bum when we did knee flexion. So we might test that out. I'm just going to go all the way up. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Fixed. <laughs> All right, so. Let me relax there. Hip, oh. hip flexion's oh. good. That feels Clean. nice. Feels good. And then heel to bum, which we like to test down here. Yeah. That's only one knuckle now. Does that feel nicer yeah, to yeah. you? I don't know. And that probably feels more like hamstring related. Yeah, a bit actually, of poplar It doesn't feel like the quad's holding me there. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if I can just do a little bit of a poplar tears release like this. See if it's gonna make any difference to that at all. Yeah. But yeah, you can see the window of opportunity now that we've got more range in that knee. Now we can go rehab it, yeah? And also just having less pain receptors going off. So there's no alarm signals in Jay Jason's brain going, oh, I don't feel comfortable doing that squat or that lunge or whatever it is because we've got rid of the pain and we've made that joint feel really clean and free. Yeah, there's no guarding. There's no guarding, exactly. Jeez, this would be magic if this gives me an extra couple of centimeters. <laughs> so That's I'm working, we're all after, isn't putting it? my thumbs in behind the back of the knee. Sorry. Fingers. My fingers in behind the back of my knee. The thumbs are just sort of here. And working that, yeah. It's quite tricky to actually find it. There it is there on the medial side. All right, an extra 30 seconds in there. Let's see, moment of truth, if that made any difference. Oh yeah, there we go, we've got a knuckle now. Yes, Pretty there you go. Happy with that. All right, let's head down to the gym part two for some corrective let's exercise. Do it. So we're down in the gym for part two. We're gonna focus on strengthening Jason's patella by 
loading the quad and also the patella tendon with a kettlebell. So we've got his firebox here. He's sitting nice and neutral and upright, okay, to begin with. He's hooked on. I think this is a, how heavy was that, Jace? Sorry, six, mate. Six maybe, six or four. That's a six kilo, 13 pound, okay, around the foot. We always do our rehab barefoot, okay? We're always in the gym barefoot to really get our foundational strength, our grip strength, and all of that from the uh, ground floor built up. Okay, so we're sitting up here. Yep. You might want to look from side. Yeah, go front on. And then yep. what you're going to do, Jace, you know it, is extend that quad. Really good. So encourages a little bit more balance. And you can see that we're really focusing on knee extension. Okay, so a little bit more specific, single leg to just being in a gym and using a um, knee extension machine or quad machine. We're just going to go for five. Really good, and rest, really good. I love that one. The next one we're gonna to progress to, Jace, is you're gonna stand up, we're gonna get your line flat on your back. So we're gonna get a little bit of hip flexion to engage a little bit of those hip flexors, yep. and also the high quad. All so right. Jace is lying flat on his back. He's gonna do the same thing. So you're just gonna aim for five, yep. Up, and then extension, good, and come down. Now this is gonna be really challenging. It's quite a progression. So flex, and then that last bit of extension. Can we slow that down? One more good one. So flex, stop, and extend. There it is. Maybe one more. Jason's really struggling here. It's nice. We're really loading that. Good. And let's have a little rest. A little oh, rest there. How'd that's that feel? good. Yeah. How'd that feel? It's good. Um, so I just had my other foot off the box so that I could actually stabilize through my mm. glute because I felt if I was hips on the box, my lower back was going to arch. So it's mm. important to keep your back flat there so your core's on. Uh, but yeah, de it definitely felt more challenging yep. um, at that last bit having to uh, flex the hip. Yep. But yeah, definitely feels good. The, no pain in the knee when I was doing that exercise. But yep. yeah, again, you're targeting it, strengthening around that patella tendon, yep. strengthening the quads. Yeah, yeah, so when we've got full extension and locking out of that knee, you can, you can see the difference between the quads, how they're gonna look there compared to full lockout. Okay, so really loading it's those quads. It's important to have a strong VMO. So a lot yep. of people have strong vastus lateralis, and that mm. can be what causes a lot of compensation around the patella, is it can get pulled laterally yep. because those muscles are strong. So it's important if you flex your knee, yep. you wanna have this muscle here, which is VMO, yep. pop up. If you don't have that, and that's sort of flat and like relaxed there, and you don't have any bulk in that, that yep. could be what's the cause of your knee pain. So when yep. you're doing these exercises, really focus on trying to squeeze and create that muscle there. Like yep. if you see bike riders, that's what they've got, mm. a big fucking VMO. It's fucking sexy too. That's what you want. You want to get that very <laughs> strong quad. Big strong quad. Okay, so there's our two. We've got uh, the, the base level. We've got a progression. Now we're going to come over to our cable machine. So this is Same leg. More specific to someone that's actually kicking or... Yep. Yeah, again, it's another step up, isn't it, Das? <laughs> yeah, so it's sport specific. With all our exercises, we're thinking of what sport Jace plays. There's a lot of running and kicking. This is going to be amazing because he's standing on one leg. So it's really focusing on that balance and then that kick through a shoulder, Jace. <clears throat> really good. So I've probably got about 10 to 15 kilos on the cable machine, and we're gonna wrap out. If Not you don't have balance, you could probably have a stick here or something just to hold, but for me, I like the challenge of actually yep. stabilizing through my hip and glute, so that's another progression or regression. This would be a regression. Yeah, just so holding out there, because you're really, really focusing, I guess, first and foremost on this, the injured side and the strengthening of that quad and patella. Yep. But if you want to add in a, a progression, yeah, you lose the stick and the balance, work on that stabilization on the stance leg, which for me Good. is important because this is what I'm doing a lot of the time when I'm kicking. So if you don't have balance, that could be something that's causing compensation through your body. Good, I want to finish here with an ISO. You're going to hold on this last rep, Chase, for 10. So fully out and hold, lock that out for 10 seconds now. Really good analgesic effect as well on that knee. So it's going to help eradicate some of the pain. Really balancing for three. Two, one, and oh. rest. So just some, some combos you can chuck in there to really fire up those quads and offload that, um, well, load that patella. We're looking for load in our tendons, okay? You don't want to stretch them when you've got pain. Unfortunately, it will cause more irritation. So clean first, build second. Yep. That's our motto. We love it. Like, subscribe. Head to our Patreon for more exclusive content. We, um, we love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. See you later.